Welcome back. So we have one more route to finish up, which is our destroy route, which is how we can delete a particular blog, or in this case, a dog. So it's a delete request, that's the verb. We have to use our underscore method with method override to make that work. And then we also need to have an ID in the path because we're deleting a particular thing. And typically your delete route or your destroy route will delete something and then redirect you somewhere else. Usually the index, because there is no show page to redirect you to if you've just deleted the thing that you would redirect to. So let's go back and let's start by defining our route. So the last one, I know it's been a little bit of a marathon. So we have our delete route and it should be an app.delete slash blog slash colon ID at our callback in and let's just do what we did with update response dot send delete or destroy route let's say you have reached the destroy route great save and just like with the update or really with any of these routes this doesn't have to be a delete request in order to delete something I could make this a get request that's just blog slash ID slash delete or remove or whatever I want. It's just if we're following RESTful routing conventions, it needs to be a delete request. Okay, so app.delete blog slash ID. Inside of here, we're just sending back you have reached the destroy route. Now we need a way to hit that route. So we can go to our show template and let's just do it underneath the post here. We'll have a button that just says delete. So we'll go back to show and just under here to make this work, we need to add in a form actually. So we need another form just like we did with update and we can start simple method is post. And that's because it has to be, if we're using method override, it needs to be a post request, but then we need to send our action, which is equal to the URL. So slash blogs and we need the ID there. And that needs to be added in with EJS tags, blog dot underscore ID. Remember blog is what we're passing in when we find it in the database using find by ID. So we're passing that through, but this isn't enough because making a post request to blog slash blog dot ID is not going to be our delete route. We need to add in underscore method equals delete. I still think it's weird after years of doing this, it's, it's kind of annoying, but it's just what you have to do. So underscore method is delete. Then inside the form, all we need is a single button to submit the form. So we'll add in a button tag and our button will just say delete. Let's just delete and we'll add in a class here just to make it look a little nicer. Using semantic, we can just do a UI red basic button. And you can pick your own color if you want orange or you want one of the inverted ones or a custom color, but this is fine for me. Red basic button that says delete. It will submit this form, sends a request, technically a post request, but our method override sees this and it treats it as a delete request, which will hopefully trigger this code here. We should see you have reached the destroy route. Okay, let's give it a shot. So we have our button, I click. Great, I get the res.send, you have reached the destroy route. So the last thing we have to do is actually destroy it inside of that route. So again, it's a two-step process, or there's two main things we do. Destroy, log, and then redirect somewhere. So to destroy, we're fortunate, there's another nice method, find by ID and remove. And that needs an ID, which again is request.params.id and then our callback which just takes error because there is no data that we'll want to do anything with coming back. If we delete something, it's gone. So we'll leave it at that and check if there's an error. If there is, we'll handle it relatively poorly. We won't give any messages or anything. We'll just redirect to slash blogs again. Else, we'll actually do the same thing but I will leave this if statement in here just because it's good practice to check for an error. Even if we're doing the same thing, there's identical outcomes. Okay, so let's see what happens now. 
we're redirecting to slash blogs after we find by ID and remove a particular blog. Let's fire it up. Let's go back to the root path. And let's find one that's worth deleting. So I think one of these is missing a title. Yes, this one here. So let's remove that. Click on delete. And hopefully, yep, there we go, it's missing. So let's delete this one again that has a gigantic image. We need to go to the show page, read more, and then click on delete. And that's deleted as well. Now we're just back to these adorable bulldogs. All right, so that's all there is to RESTful Routes. It's a lot, I know. This is something that when I teach this in person, when we have three months or six months, we hit this hard for two plus weeks. I would have you build an app for dogs and then repeat the same thing for something equally boring like cats and users and friends and photos, and you just get used to this pattern. And actually, one of the exercises I really recommend you do that is not going to be all that fun or glamorous, really, um, is just to redo what we just did, but with another thing. So not a blog, maybe a dog, that's fine. Maybe you do it for a book. Maybe you do it for a movie. It doesn't matter. But just something that you have all seven routes for. This is really important that you try and get comfortable with. We'll be using it all the time. You know, I'll be hitting it pretty hard and, and reiterating as we go. But if you want to start building your own apps and that's one of your goals, memorize this. Type up this table from scratch. It's good practice to use a bootstrap table too. The last small modification we'll make is to add an edit link to the show page. Right now, we don't have a nice way of getting to edit. So very simple. I'll just make another button, just like we have with our delete. So I'll just copy that, except it needs to be an anchor tag because we're not sending a form, we're not sending a post request, just a get request. So href should be, I'll just copy this, blogs slash ID slash edit. And this should just say edit. And we're missing a quote, or we have one too many quotes. There we go. Let's add in our class equal to, and we'll do UI, let's do orange, basic button. Save. Refresh, and we have our edit button. You will notice that they're on different lines. The reason for that is that forms by default are not inline elements, like an anchor tag is. So if we inspect and select the form, not the button, but the form, and I give it display inline, notice that it jumps up like that, which is probably what we want. So to do that, there's no easy way, as far as I know, using semantic to do it without writing your own CSS. So what we'll do is just define something in our CSS file. So we open up app.css and we'll just define an ID called delete form. And we'll just call it delete. And the, the styles for that will just be display inline. Now we just need to go over to our form, which is right here. And just give it ID equals delete. And we should be good to go now, if I refresh. It stays exactly the same. Perfect. So still not the most stylish, not the most beautiful thing, but it works for this. We're not going for anything crazy. Great. So the next video is optional. But I'm going to talk about styling the home page a bit. So you can see it needs some work. And I'll talk about sanitizing the input that's coming from the user so that they can't do anything malicious. They can't write a script tag that will run code when we display the post. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video.